What is going on guys? I hope you're having a good day. For me, it's Thursday, but for you guys, it's the weekend, so I hope you're having a good weekend. But today, I thought I'd do a little vlogging because today is going to be a pretty unique day and I thought I'd take you guys along for the ride. Tonight, I'm going to a concert for my friend Louis Knudsen. He's a musician. He is the one who gave me the music for my intro and outro for videos I do on this channel and for the ones that I do on Pineapple Hog Studios. So he's releasing his third album tonight. I'm going to go to the release concert for that. But before that, we've got a few other things that we need to take care of. So first, we got to go get some space for a meeting that I'm having this weekend with a few other YouTubers here in the Quad Cities. Second thing is, there's a new comic book store here over in Bettendorf, and I want to go check that out, see what selections they have, see what their whole deal is. So that's going to be what we do next. And then, after that, it's off to the concert. So, let's go. This is my ride for today. This is my baby, my favorite vehicle. It's a 2007 GMC Sierra. I call it Old Rusty because, well, there's rust literally all over the place. It's got it on the sides, on the back fender, on the other half of the back fender, and all along the other side. But it adds character, so I'm a fan. So like I said, first up for today is going to get some space for my meeting with the other Quad City YouTubers on Saturday. Uh, the place I'm going for that is the Port Mountain Library. We've used it before. Their top room is basically like an open event community center. So that's where we're going to go first. So here we go. So we're here at the library now. Just gotta go in there. Hopefully we can get the upper room for this weekend. And if not, well, we ain't gonna have to find somewhere else. But let's do this. A few moments later. Okay, got that taken care of. There was some business and paperwork stuff involved, but it's all. Now the next stop is going on to the comic book store, and that's over in Bettendorf. So we gotta cross the river. So let's do this. I've noticed I've been doing that a lot, so I need to really come up with a better transition, but... Uh, it's down the road. Bricks without straw, working for Pharaoh. Mucho trabajo, poco dinero. Life is not short, it's long. There's no free lunch and prices rise. Earning less and less, the harder I try. Life is not short, it's long. Life is not short, it's long. I'm on my way over to the comic book store, and on my way down the road, I spot this. Yep, that right there is where I work when I'm not making videos for you guys. Let's go in. So let's go in through the drive-thru and pop in on. Get something to eat too. So I'm here now. Got a large uh, chocolate Reese's Peanut Butter Cup shake. Uh, so yeah, fun fact, I work at an ice cream place. And as you can see, everyone there is hard to work right. So yeah, I'm just going to pull up to the next window and wait for my shake there. You know, it's really days like this, like going to all these places, doing all this stuff. really makes me appreciate living here in middle America. It's like... This is like a dreamland, like really. I mean, sure, it gets boring when there's like nothing around except cornfields. Like, if you get into like town areas and stuff, places around here in like the Midwest are really interesting. And it's like just very picturesque. Like, I love living here. Like, people here are awesome. And you know, a lot of times, like, you don't really think about that. Like, where you live, you take it for granted because it's just there. But like, you get out some days and like, get out, see some stuff. It's really interesting. Like, especially like working here at Whitey's, like this ice cream place. It's a really cool place to work. I mean, sure, it gets really busy in the summer when everyone wants ice cream, but it's a nice way to live. So, here it is, guys my amazing shake. Shout out to my co worker Hannah Brown for making it. And I'm about to eat this on our way to the comic book store. Alright, guys, finished my shake. And we're here now. Just gonna give you a little view of it here. There we go. So I'm going to go inside and see what I can see. Hopefully they'll let me record. If not, I'll just show you guys what I got if I decide to get anything. So, let's do this thing. Alright guys, so let me film in here. So I'm just going to like give you guys a quick look around. All this stuff, like all the recent DC issues, like, and stuff that goes way back when. So, this is pretty cool stuff. I mean, like, right here you got lots of Batman stuff. I mean, like, a lot of Batman oh, stuff. Good. Batman. And, uh, also Batman. Days, Batman. Sure Batman. Yeah, a lot of Batman there. Um, 
countdown. Like, that's an older series. Like, okay. You see, because they got the old logo there. Um, yep. Ooh. That looks scary. Like, you mind me asking like a few questions about this? Go for it. So, yeah. you guys have been doing this recently. Like, when do you guys start doing this? We opened in October. October, like last year? Yeah, October last year. Yep. Yeah. Uh, how busy has it been, like, coming in here and stuff? It's been pretty busy. It's busier every week. Uh, free Comic Book Day was a huge uh, increase in volume for us as far as customers go. Yeah. So, I, I thought about coming down here for that, but I had other stuff going on that day, so well, sort of missed that. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, how far back do, like, all these selections go? Like, So, a lot of these are random collections we bought from people looking to get rid of them. Uh, some of it's my personal collection to kind of start and start it up. Uh, we have a box over there that we just got about 5,000 books in that aren't sorted. Uh, just, just to, uh, to the left further. Oh. Uh, that first box on the right-hand side of that has a bunch of Avengers books that date back to early 100s issues of the Avengers. Uh, yeah. And so, we have a pretty wide variety, nothing, you know, too too yeah, fancy as far as gold age, silver age, just a yeah. little bit here and there. But mostly modern. Um, modern stuff like... Late 80s to, to now. It's oh, okay. Pretty, pretty much the majority of it. Yeah. I noticed you got, like, guys have all these like sorted into like categories, like say Batman and stuff. Like, How many like to a category do like, you guys have at the most? Uh, I don't know. Probably... So a lot of these have been, chunks have been taken. So when you buy a collection from someone that's looking to get rid of their years of collecting, you end up with people that are filling holes in their collection. Oh, okay. So, so a lot of those, you know, people are like, oh, great, I was not collecting for, you know, 94 through 97. This guy has the entire run I've been missing, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So they've been picked through. I would say that the Detective Comics is probably the largest collection we have right now. Um, Outside of that, there's a ton of X-Men books over on the other side with the Marvel stuff. Yeah. But, uh, I, I imagine it would be since, like, that's a pretty popular series. Yeah. yeah. People always buy X-Men. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thanks for, uh, like, answering a few questions. Yeah, no problem. Like, Let me know if you have any other ones. Yeah, sure. That was dope. Oh, dude. Like, here we got some of the old image stuff, like Shadowhawk. Like, I've only read a few issues of this series, but, like, this is some pretty good stuff. Like, late mid to late 90s type issues so yeah but now i'm gonna start doing my selection shopping stuff like that so see you guys later all right guys i finished up my selection uh, i think i'm done in town for today until it's time for the concert so i think we're gonna go home first i want to show you guys some of the stuff i got these are some older issues but here we got uh convergence number two uh, Convergence and part number three. These were part of a series that they did back in, I believe, uh, 2015, where all the worlds in the DC universe combined. And then I've got DC Rebirth Flash number 16. So I'd say all in all, it was a good day of hunting. So I'm going to go home now. Uh, the concert for Lewis doesn't start until 7, so I'm just going to buy my time until then. So let's go back home. Bricks without straw, working for Pharaoh, mucho trabajo, poco dinero. Life is not short, it's long. There's no free lunch and prices rise, earning less and less. The harder I try, life is not short, it's long. Life is not short, it's long. If you walk out the door, you'd best be aware. It hurts to try and it hurts to care. Life is not short, it's long. Find the pot of gold and soon it's Far, far away from you, life is not short, it's long. Life is not short, it's long. Texting, 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 texting,
checking out the house site, so I'd say in about maybe a few minutes or so, we should see them try to come up on stage, so fingers crossed. You probably can't see that because it's so dark now, but fingers crossed right now. Um, 
it, it, I, I just started thinking, like, really getting down and being like, this isn't going to happen. Like, I just, like, I'm going to have to just, um, just, just, yeah, just, just give up. Um, not stop writing music, but like, this album just isn't going to happen. But, but uh, all of a sudden, things kind of strangely came together. Um, Pat Stolle, uh I, I found out that he was available to, to do some recording. We had a Kickstarter campaign, and a lot of you donated to that, so we raised money for, um, for studio recording. And so, um, so I'm standing here tonight at just so, so grateful to each and every one of you. Now, uh, even if you didn't donate to Kickstarter, I'm not saying that, like, that it's just for, just for being here and being able to celebrate this moment with me um, and my band is really, really special for me. Um, and, and so much, so many of you guys, um, I just, you're, you're a really special part of my life. For, so thank you for being here and, and for taking the time to come. There's, there's a ton of stuff always going on in the Quad Cities and it's, 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 it's a struggle to get people up to stuff. So the fact that you're here means you decided not going to go somewhere else. And I really appreciate that. Um, thank you. So, um, yeah. The past couple CDs I've done, I've, I've just kind of done home recording style, and uh, I really had a vision to to uh, to do what, what some other bands are doing in the area and also in the country, and that is kind of old school recording, like do do stuff on tape, you know, instead of digital, do stuff um, through through old fashioned microphones and, and all that good stuff. So, um, where did you actually record it? We recorded it at Future Apple Tree uh, Records. I'm, this is like a Q and A now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, in Rock Island, um, Pat Stolle has a studio called uh, Future Apple Tree uh, Studio, and uh, yeah, <laughs> really appreciate that. Thank you. So it was, it was, it was, it was a lot of elements of, of getting getting a date that was free for him, and and, and so and then getting um, Chris and Brandon, my drummer, like we were, they have uh, a busy schedule, so I finally got a time when we were all just came in um, someday in February, I think. It's all a blur now, but um, we all we all went into the studio and we just recorded these songs in a day. We started in the morning and we just kept going and kept going. Um, the whole everything that you hear on the CD uh, or on the on the album is not was not done in that day. But but the trio part of it, me and, and Brandon and Chris, the, the rhythm and vocals and guitar and stuff that was done uh, just just kind of just just really by necessity. Like we didn't have time to schedule like five five days for this, so. So, uh, uh, you know, um, Pat was super patient, like he just, uh, just did whatever it took. I changed my mind on a bunch of things, and, um, and, it, and it, I, I love how it sounds. Um, it, it sounds warm, it sounds like I wanted it to sound. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of, if you know my music, you know I kind of like to dabble in all sorts of stuff, and I really have a hard time like honing in on one specific sound, but, but uh, there's songs that, that I, uh, that represent things that I, I really want to say. It's a little and, and um, there's a picture of a meat cleaver on the on the album cover, and uh, I, yeah, everybody keeps asking me why why is there a meat cleaver on this? The answer is I don't really know. I just liked it. <laughs> um, I've always enjoyed cooking in the in the kitchen with a meat cleaver because it's it's just such a multi multi purpose thing. Like you can you can chop things, you can slice things, you can um, you can actually use it like. I've used it for spatula before. I've used it for uh, spreading butter on uh, toast. You know, <laughs> I know that you don't do that, but I do. It's just a little, a little different. So um, I don't know. I, I like the image, and uh, in, so take it as take it as a that image as like a poem to yourself, and, and decide what it means to you. Um, the title of the album is Philip. That's my middle name. It's just kind of sounded right for some reason when I when I thought of it. Um, and uh, yeah, I really hope you you enjoy it. I've uh, I've uh, over the over the years, it's it's been interesting. Like as as you look at everyone around here, like a lot of you are that like don't know each other, and just like people from you know like different walks of life. And it's interesting for me as a musician to think about like who who does my music connect with? Um, who 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 comes up to see a show and who doesn't like? I mean, obviously, there's there's promotion, and, and you, the more if you tell a bunch of people, like maybe more likely they go to a show. But uh, but there's certain people that come back, you know, and then they, they'll honestly say, like, I really like your music. And so I, I love I love the fact that it's just um, I, I just always run into people that I wouldn't expect. Like, really, you, you like you like them? Oh, that's cool. And and some people I think, oh, you should like my songs, and they don't, and that's fine. Um, but uh, 
but I, I really, um, I really just, uh, I guess being a songwriter has taught me, taught me who, um, has really introduced me to some, some people and created friendships that I wouldn't have had otherwise because, oh, through music, you know, music creates this, this bond about like, oh, I like that song that you wrote about this or whatever. Uh, I'll get, you know, um, so I appreciate you being there. The next song we're going to do is called Home Is Where, and uh, it's, it's kind of about that idea. This, this song is a, a song I wrote quite a while ago, and, um, and uh, for, for a while I've, I've just been playing it, and there have been certain people in my life that were like, yeah, you should really, like, you should really do that song and put it on an album. So, so we did, and uh, we've got uh, the, the talented Joshua Forbes on, on saxophone. So, uh, we can be for that. But first, uh, just just again to give you a little idea of what it's like to be in a rehearsal, I'm gonna I'm gonna pass out some some coffee. Who wants some coffee?